All right, what's up you guys? This is Mrs. Winstead and I am now working on On Shape Part 4. This one is kind of a funky one because it's got like these discs and then this part in the middle. There's a lot of weirdness to this one, but we're going to give it a try and we're not going to we're not going to worry too much. We're going to do the best that we can. Um like I said before in previous videos, the best way to learn this process is to do it. Just try it out. You'll probably be wrong a few times. You'll probably have to keep trying, but you can't give up. You gotta, you gotta give it the best try that you can. Okay, so let's see here. There are so many different ways that we could go about this process. <laughs> so we could do a revolve but I don't know if I'm wanting to do a revolve. Like usual, my method might not be the best method. You might have one that's better. I don't even know. I do know that these discs are 1.25 in diameter. So I'm, I think I'm gonna start my sketch here on the top plane. Start with a circle. Click and 1.25. Okay. That gives me a circle. So maybe what I'll do is I'll extrude this part on the bottom here, and then I'll make that, and then I'll do the second circle on top. I don't know how this is gonna go. Could be kind of weird, but I'm gonna try it out. Okay, well then that means that I'm done with that sketch, I guess. So whatever. Okay, let me go ahead and extrude this uh, to figure out how far I need to extrude this up. I look over here, at this kind of front view, so to speak. And that says it's 0.5. So I'm gonna go ahead and type 0.5 in here. And then there's that. All right, well, that's a good start. And then there's this kind of like square rectangle thingy thingy. Yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and I think draw that and extrude it and then put the part on the top. So I'm gonna do another sketch, this time on the top of the circle. Rotate my view. Okay, <laughs> so then coming up with this shape, I know that my square part starts in the middle, so that's helpful. It says that it's 0.25 to the very middle, which would mean that this side length is most likely 0.5 because if it goes from here to where the like middle of the holes are, then I would assume that it's the same distance to the other side because these are centered. Okay, well that gives me something to work with here. I'm going to start my square somewhere over in this bottom like left hand quadrant here. And I'm going to come across the middle so that I'm up in the upper right hand quadrant before I click my second time. And I'm going to type in my 0.5, enter, and my other 0.5, enter. Now you can see this is all kinds of messed up because it's nowhere near centered. Part of the reason that I like to start things at origin is because then I have built-in lines that I can use to create center lines, which is what I'm going to do here. So I'm going to take the line tool. Outside of the circle, I'm just going to click somewhere. And then on the other outside of the circle, I'm going to click somewhere. I don't even care. I'm going to hit escape. Click the line tool one more time. And this time on the left side, click somewhere, click somewhere, escape. So now I have like these crosshairs kind of set up. So what that does is that allows me to use the symmetric tool, which is buried in my menu here. Uh, over here where the constraints are. I'm gonna click symmetric. Symmetric basically says like line it up so that this center line is in the middle. So you do have to have a center line for it. So I'm first going to say that these two lines need to be lined up so that the, this center line is in the middle. So I'm gonna click the two lines and then I'm gonna click my center line and that's gonna scoot it over so that it's centered. And then I'm gonna do the same thing. I'll click symmetric again, top, bottom, center line, and that scoots it to the middle. Perfection. 
Now to make my extrude a little bit easier, I'm also going to do some trimming. That's under this menu here where fillet's showing up. I'm going to click trim. And I'm going to say, I don't need these lines in the middle, fam. There we go. I'm just going to trim those out so that it's just like an open square. The center lines won't even be seen by the extrude tool because they're one dimensional. They're, they're not. They ain't special. Click OK. And I'm going to rotate back to my front view here, my standard view, quote unquote. All right, so now I'm going to click this extrude tool and I'm basically going to be having this column come up here. So now I got to figure out how tall this column is. I know that it's, well, this whole thing is 2.5. This bottom disc was 0.5. This top disc is 0.25. I'm going to do the math. 2.5 minus 0.25 for the top disc minus 0.5 for the bottom disc gets me the correct height. And click OK. So the next thing I I'm going to do the top disc and then I'm going to deal with these holes. These holes are going to be a whole other fun thing. I'm going to do a sketch this time on the top of the column. Rotate my view. I want to make a circle. I want it to be the same size as this circle that was underneath, which was 1.25, rather. I'm going to click 1.25, enter. Okay. And that's, that was, that was it. That was the whole thing. So now I've got this like floating circle up here. I'm going to extrude my circle. Oh, and it's like cutting out the middle. That's pretty wacky. Hmm. Well, then I'm going to click this square in the middle. There we go. Problem solved. Problem solved. Sometimes clicking one more thing is all you need. Uh, and this needs to go 0.25 according to the drawing. And then there's that. So I end up with this like funky column thingy. So now I want to put these holes in here. Um, the easiest way to make a hole is to sketch points where the holes are supposed to be. And then when you exit your sketch, there's a whole tool that you'll use for that. But you need a point first. So I'm going to sketch this time on the front of the column. Let me rotate my view. Well, technically this is the right, but it doesn't matter. It's just a rotated view. Okay, so now I need to put my points in the correct location. A point is right here. I know I want these points to be centered, which is part of the reason why I start everything on origin to make my life easier, because then I have like a built-in center line. It's not even a real line, but still, it's it's there. It's ready for me, which is grand. I know that my first point is going to be 0.5 from like the bottom disc. The next point will be 0.5 above that, and the next point will be 0.5 above that. So I'm just going to arbitrarily stick three points on here. I know it sounds very imprecise, but there's a reason. Once I have my points in place, I can then use the dimension tool to say where the points are actually supposed to be. The first point is supposed to be 0.5 from that bottom. It's not. It's 0.410743. I don't even like it. I'm going to just type 0.5. Enter. I know that my second point is supposed to be 0.5 from the first point, so I'm going to Go from here to here. Oof, not even close. 0.5, enter. That moved it. Okay. Now I know that this point is supposed to be 0.5 from this point. Oof. 0.5, enter. Look at that. My points are in the correct locations. It even matches up with that. That's grand. Click my check mark. Rotate back. Now I'm going to use the whole tool and the whole tool by default will recognize points. So you can just click the points. I want all my holes to be the same size anyway. So there's really no point in, you know, doing weird stuff. It says there's supposed to be 0.25 in diameter, which this already is, which is helpful. And I want it to be through. So instead of blind, I'm going to click through up here and I'll click the check mark and look at that. 
Look at that lovely shape. That's part number four, all done.